in terms of, let's say, an embryo developing, what we think traditionally in textbooks is that the genetics somehow gives a blueprint and the whole thing just unpacks. But what you're asking is, how is the system intelligent? If we knock it off track or put barriers in the way, how does it figure out how to come together correctly? So what's what's a specific example of something you've done? Uh, here, here, are, here are some of my, my favorites. These these first two are not my work. These are, this is like classic, classic work in the field. Imagine cutting a cross section through the kidney tubule of a, of a newt. Normally, what you'd find is like eight to 10 cells and they work together to build this, uh, this, this tube-like structure. So what you can do is you can make polyploid newts that have um, multiple copies of their chromosomes, which means their cells have to get bigger. Those newts are still the same correct size. So that's the first interesting thing. Wow, well, the cells get bigger, the thing scales down. How does it do it? By using fewer but bigger cells to make the exact same structure. So that's an adjustment. Never mind the environment, your own parts are changing. And this thing is figuring out how to get to the exact same goal, the same newt, same shape, same size, fewer of these bigger cells. Let me ask you a quick question. Is this analogous to the fact that uh, a mouse's heart and an elephant's heart are doing the same thing, but they're made of a completely different number of cells. It's a massive heart in an elephant, very tiny in a mouse, but it's doing the same function. It's similar, uh, but but there's only but there's one major difference. Both in a mouse and in an elephant, what people will say is, well, both of those have had long a long history of being what they are, and so this is just mechanical. It just does what it does. My 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 example is is different because you've done something to this newt that it does not normally do. You've given it a completely novel uh, uh, circumstance, and then it adjusts in a new way. And the craziest thing happens when you make the cells really gigantic. Okay, these are like, I think, six or eight uh, and newts. So massive polyploidy. What happens is the cells are so big, there's no room for more than one cell. One cell will wrap around itself and give you the lumen of the tubule in the middle. Now, now this is crazy because because that is that's a different molecular mechanism. That's cytoskeletal bending before it was cell to cell communication and tubulogenesis. So think about what this means if you're a newt coming into the world. Never mind the environment. You don't really know what your environment's going to be. You don't know how many copies of your chromosomes you're going to have. You don't know how big your cells are going to be. You don't know which of your many um, genetic affordances you can use, right? You have different molecular mechanisms you can use. You have to figure out what to do in a novel circumstance and still get the job done. I mean, this sounds like uh, every IQ test you've ever heard of when people show you, hey, here's a little box, some tacks and a candle, and I want you to you know, solve this, this particular problem, right? Yeah, you have genetic affordances, and then that morphogenetic process is not just doing the same thing every single time. You have to solve these problems. That's one of my favorite examples.